popular porn star is about to leave her prime and makes an attempt to get into acting like, uh, you know, Hollywood traditional style acting in order to reach the top. Sound cool? So I'm here to talk about Maxine from 2024. So Maxine was directed by Ty West and stars uh, Mia Goth, of course, uh, Kevin Bacon, and Giancarlo Esposito. As you probably know, it is part of a trilogy including X and Pearl, and uh, all three films were made back to back and released one at a time. I mean, personally, I think Ty West is one of the best directors in horror today. Uh, so far, I, I mean, I've enjoyed everything that I've seen him do. The House of the Devil from 2009 uh, really showed his potential with its, you know, kind of 70s throwback style. I also really enjoyed lesser appreciated films like uh, The Innkeepers and The Sacrament. I blind bought X back when it came out and I loved it. Um, it was my introduction to Mia Goth actually who really blew me away later that year with uh, her performance in Pearl, the prequel to X. And Pearl really made me a Mia Goth fan. The, the entire film kind of rests on her shoulders and could easily have fallen apart. A weak performance would have destroyed it with, uh, with only minor characters, you know, to help carry the load. There is a particular scene in Pearl, and I don't think I even have to say which one, uh, that if it doesn't win you over, I don't really know what will. So Maxine was definitely my most anticipated movie of 2024, I think that's fair to say. Uh, now, how does it stack up to X and Pearl? Obviously, I have not spent as much time with it thus far, but going off, you know, one screening, uh, it's so far, at least, my least favorite of the three. That said, I did like it. I think it's good, and this will be a, a pretty positive review. And in case you didn't know, Maxine is a pretty much a direct sequel to X, which was set in the 1970s, and Maxine being set in the 1980s. So Maxine Minx is now a veteran porn star with her sights set on acting, as I said earlier, now that she is in her early 30s. She wants to be famous and will do anything it takes to get there. And one reason that I think I prefer Pearl is that I like the character of Pearl more than the character of Maxine. And that, that's just a personal preference thing, I guess you could say. Uh, Mia Goth aside, Maxine is, you know, she's arrogant, she's kind of selfish, and uh, in my opinion, I mean, not really a great person. Um, not that Pearl is either, but, uh, you know, I'm just saying. Don't And don't get me wrong, I know this is horror. And I guess what I'm saying is that you do root for Maxine, don't get me wrong. But to me, she is completely unlikable, uh, and in my opinion, by design. The film starts off with an old black and white recording from 1959 of a uh, young Maxine and her uh, televangelist father. And this is a great way to start the film because it keeps that connection to X, which I, you know, I wasn't sure how much of that there would be. And after things being quiet for Maxine for quite some time now, her past seems to be catching up with her. And one day she finds a package left on her doorstep containing the unfinished movie uh, that was uh, she was a part of in X. And around that same time, Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, was doing his thing, and bodies of women were turning up with like pentagrams like branded on their bodies. And my only complaint here is that I kind of thought that uh, Ramirez would have a bigger role here, but again, mild complaint. And Maxine then gets a visit from private detective named uh, John Labatt, uh, played by Kevin Bacon. I have always been a fan of Kevin Bacon. Ever, you know, ever since I saw Tremors as a little kid, he's just one of those versatile actors who has managed to stay relevant, you know, all these years later while so many others haven't. And that is not by chance. You know, he's a very skilled actor and he, uh, he really can just do it all when you think about it. I mean, he can do comedy, you know, he can do action, he can do serious performances. And one of his biggest strengths is that he can play a truly believable dirtbag. And that is what he does here, and he turns it up to 10. The first time I saw him play like this type of character was in Super from 2010, uh, one of my all-time favorite movies. I gotta review that someday. And his character here is along those lines, but at the same time, a little bit different. Just as sleazy, though. So he kind of helps give this, uh, this film sort of a detective noir vibe, which, uh, which is cool. One of the many vibes this film has, too, I should mention. And while we're on that subject, another, another style here that you see that I did not expect uh, were like the Italian giallo vibes. The main villain here is 100% uh, giallo inspired. Uh, he's got the black leather coat and more importantly black leather gloves and kills his victims with a knife mostly. I apologize if that's revealing too much. I, I just thought it was so cool and I, I had to bring it up. I don't, I don't think it's, it's really much of a spoiler at all. Now, as badass as Maxine is, uh, she has a few cool people on her side and they, they very much have her back. The first being her buddy Leon, played by Moses Sumney, 
a metalhead slash horror fan who works in a porn store. The other being her manager, Teddy Knight, played by the always cool as hell uh, Giancarlo Esposito. And Teddy is one of my favorite characters here. He just has so much charisma, and I love the fact that he goes so far uh, above and beyond for Maxine. He completely believes that she will be a star, and let's just put it this way, anyone who fucks with Maxine will have to cross this guy. And believe me, y you don't want that. And now I'll circle back to Mia Goth. Uh, you know, I'm kind of a sucker for badass female characters, and she is definitely that. She does not let anyone fuck with her. It's, it's, it's fucking awesome. And let's just say that if you want to keep your dick intact, <laughs> don't cross this girl. Mia, is, she's great here. I, you know, I definitely prefer the character of Pearl to Maxine, like I said, uh, but I think that's just a personal preference. Maxine, I mean, I know I already said it, she's just so arrogant, and that's always kind of off-putting quality for me in people. Um, so it's, it's kind of hard for me to look past. I feel like I'm the only person reviewing this movie saying that. I feel like a douchebag, but um, I don't know, man. What can I, what can I say? But uh, anyways, at the end of the day, we are all products of our upbringing, and Maxine had a hell of a life up to that point. And so, here we are, the end of the X trilogy. Uh, and if you're wondering if you need to watch X and, and or Pearl before you see Maxine, I'd say sort of. You don't really need to see Pearl first, although I urge you to at least check it out at some point, because it's great. But I would recommend that you watch X first, if you can, if you have time. Um, you can still enjoy Maxine, uh, you know, if you haven't, and you won't be totally lost. But I think you would appreciate it more by watching X first. Maxine was definitely worth the wait. It's, it's not my favorite of the trilogy, uh, like I said, but it's still very, very good. I will definitely praise Ty West for years to come for making this happen. Now what I wonder is, will we see anything else from any of these storylines? To be honest, you know, I'd, I'd personally rather see more of Pearl than I would of Maxine, if there were to be more, uh, you know, more stuff coming in the future. Um, I, I mean, there's, there's like a 50 to 60 year gap between Pearl and X, and I need more. I need to know what Pearl and Howard were, you know, up to all those years, but then maybe it's better that we just remain curious, you know? I'm giving Maxine a 7 out of 10. Again, not my favorite of the trilogy, but I still highly recommend it. I cannot wait to watch it again. Um, I don't know if I'll see it in the theater again. I might. I uh, definitely will be buying it when it comes out. If you have seen it, let me know what you thought and uh, how you think it stacks up to X and Pearl. I'd love to hear it. Cheers, guys.